Hello and good morning. How are you? Let me know if you're here live. Welcome to another book sharing live stream where we're going to talk about this one, Alex Webb's latest book, Dislocation. So if you are here live, uh, please just let me know if you can hear me or I, I saw Dave Nelson in the live chat already. Um, but anyone else, let me know if the audio is okay. And uh, again, welcome to the stream. Feel free to let me know what you think about Alex Webb or why you joined the stream today, what brings you here. But if you're watching this later on uh, after the stream, uh, non-live, please feel free to skip ahead a few minutes if you want. If you don't want to sit around for all the preamble, just while I wait for the live stream um, audience to join and just to kind of set things up a little bit. But if you want to stay for that, you can stay for that too. All right, looking good. Thanks for joining, Dave. I know you sometimes struggle to, to make these ones. But yeah, if anyone here is watching, are you already familiar with Alex Webb or did you, did you just click on the video because you saw, hey, this looks like an interesting photo book or you're trying to find out more? I'd be keen to know because if you've been watching my channel for a while and some of my previous book sharing live streams, you know that uh, Alex Webb is one of my favorite street photographers especially when it comes to his color work. And I have more photo books by him than anyone else, I think, as a single artist. So yeah, I had um, no choice but to get this when I heard it was coming out. Thanks for joining, Melissa. Yeah, and if you uh, haven't joined one of these book sharing live streams before, the format, which is a little bit tricky at times, is where I have the book with me here and I have another camera just overhead so I can actually flip through the book, give you an idea of the contents of the book and just some of my thoughts on it whilst also kind of like not spoiling too much of it and then just giving you my recommendation if, for example, you are a fan of Alex Webb but you're not sure you want to get this one or you're just getting into photo books and uh, you want to figure out if it's, you know, you want to get a preview basically. So yeah. So you just bought the book and you loved it. Yeah. Um, I saw you bought the book. You love Alex Webb. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan. My favorite book of his is still probably The Suffering of Light because it's such a great collection of stuff spanning such a long time. I think it's 30 years. And I have a, a, a video on that if anyone's keen. And then probably as a single collection, I love the Istanbul photo book. Love, it's so good. So yeah, if anyone uh, watching hasn't seen those ones, check them out. Steve, you were lucky enough to meet him at the at a convention in San Diego, late 80s. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so why not get into it? Um, first, I'll give you the background. I bought the book a few months ago, but it's been sitting on my desk. I hadn't had a chance to look through it until uh, much later because I was uh, going overseas as you might know what was you know you were too busy basically and then just uh, in the recent few days finally got around to flipping through it having a good look um, I went and sat outside in some nice light and had a, a thorough look through and uh, yeah I won't um, give away too much yet because I'll give you the little preview but the background of this one is it's actually a re-release of a book that he, he made quite a while ago. It was like a special edition kind of thing where it was a collection of images that didn't really fit into other collections. I'm sure we've all been there as photographers where you have these disparate images that don't really um, belong. But then he looked at them and thought, hey, they belong with each other in their own ways because even the contents of the images themselves, um, as the title suggests, are kind of these dislocated uh, maybe subject or elements across an image, things that don't really fit together, these broken up frames that you might recognize his work for in a lot of his images from you know, previous uh, collections. So that was the story behind that. They re-released it by bringing in a bunch of the images from the original publication or the previous one, which was many years ago, and then adding a bunch of new work to it. So in the original, it was all stuff he shot, uh, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe up to the early 2000s. But then this new one was ideated during the pandemic when he was starting to shoot again and look at the world being, you know, dislocated, so to speak, and then kind of, you know, the inability to travel. So that's the backstory. And then they re-released it. And I was really excited for this book and, you know, I, I got it straight away. So let's switch to the other camera 
And um, nice comment here from Dave. Every photo of mine is a dislocation. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But yeah, before I switch over, anyone else in the live chat, or even if you're watching this later, I'll, I'll come back and check the comments. Let me know your thoughts if you already got this book if you are thinking of getting it, or if you have some other Alex Webb, uh, you know, collections that you really want to um, share with us that we may not know about, because a lot of the people watching would be curious as well. There are some books that I was never able to get my hands on because they're out of print and they're, or they're really expensive to get, like some of the stuff from South America, some of the original ones as well. Anyway. Let's switch over. Hope this is still working. Ah, all right, I did this thing. I think it just goes to sleep and I can wake it up. All right, cool. That's easy. I love an easy fix. Um, do you remember those colored bars though from when you would have a, a VHS or something or a DVD player that was starting up <laughs> or, or a video game player that wasn't connected properly? Uh, yeah, so Nice cover. It's got the dust, the dust cover kind of situation like most of his books. Underneath looks like that. It's not really a linen cover. I think it's just a, a card with this sort of... Um, uh, is it debossed? I, I mix them up. Uh, title card in the, the middle there. Someone tell me, is it embossed or debossed when it's sunken in? I think it's debossed. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to fit the entire book across the, the screen very neatly because of the nature of it. It's kind of like a really long panoramic setup once you open it up. But yeah, I'll just kind of shift around. And again, I didn't want to spoil the entire book for you guys anyway. But I love this opening image here because it just kind of sets the mood entirely with this, speaking of old VHS players and whatnot, with this old screen just sitting on a rooftop seemingly dislocated just kind of disparately placed and without you knowing why with the way he's framed it and just the beautiful kind of colors of this you know pink purple sunset going on and just that mystery that i, can, I think sets the mood of like what you might expect for the rest of the book and that was taken in atlanta 1996 so the interesting thing about this book is that there's images spanning multiple decades back when he was shooting on film and probably a lot more active and then uh, in his more recent years where he would have made a shift to digital and this is what i was speaking about earlier with images that within themselves are broken up into different parts where he grabs these elements in say the foreground or background that kind of create shapes or points of interest like this uh, graphic of an eye and then the reflections and and what's beyond the window. But yeah, I'll quickly try and ad address some of the live chat comments. Dare I broach how much this gem costs? So that's one of the interesting things I was going to talk about later in the stream is that this photo book was actually quite a bargain compared to his other ones because I bought it for about 45 Australian dollars, which if you're in the, the US or you need the US dollar as uh, an indicator of price in your region, that's about 29 US dollars, I think. And I have Amazon Prime, so it was shipped for free. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's a pretty good price for a big photo book like this. What is it like? I think a 10 by 8 inch or larger, 11 by something. Yeah, one of those standard sizes that they do a lot of books in. It's, print, it's by Aperture. This one's printed in China, but the quality of the printing and the construction is quite nice. Nothing to worry about there. All right, let's just peacefully try and look through a bit of this book and I can sip a bit of my coffee because I haven't had one yet this morning. And if you are watching and if you are also familiar with Alex Webb's work both across the older stuff and the newer stuff, let me know what you think. Was there a drastic change between the newer stuff and the older stuff? What I'm realizing is that I should probably move my face across to this side of the screen. It's less obtrusive. How's that? Okay. It might be hard for you to make out on the live stream these little captions, but this one's Madrid 1992. And this is a cl classic Alex Webb shot <laughs> to me just the amount of color, shadow, and light play 
contrast. Contrast is really how I would sum up his work in, in one word. However, on the question I was just speaking of, I don't find as much use of that heavy contrast in his later work, whether it be in terms of the actual light play. So heavy shadows, heavy color contrast, and uh, you know that really dramatic kind of look. Whereas some of the newer stuff, like this one here, for example, sure it has it, but later on you might see that there's a tendency for the newer stuff to just look a little bit flatter. And not just visually, but also in terms of the content. Two thousand and ten, two thousand seventeen. I quite like this image. This one, although it pairs well, I don't think it's as, as strong as this one. And there was kind of this tendency that I there you go, so you can see it all. Um, I myself was finding a preference towards the older stuff, and I don't know if that's just nostalgia or something that's you know inherent to having gotten into something or someone's work during a certain era like you might like a musician and you got into them when they launched this album and then you're always like the later stuff isn't as good it's it's kind of just a you know a tendency but yeah that's what i would find with his work this one is actually one of the newer images that i really like this is from uh, italy in 2019 and this to me is a classic alex webb kind of shot um shot set up and it has that heavy contrast that i'm talking about both in terms of all the the graphical elements, little blocks of shapes. He really has an eye for these shapes that are created by things like that and this rectangle in the background and this one with the, the heavy color contrast as well, the deep shadows, the light play, and then all these disparate elements. So yeah, just having looked at these few images, you can get an idea of what the kind of the sub, the loose subject matter of this book is. And it'll probably give you enough of an idea to figure out, okay, you know, I don't, I like the book, I would probably get a copy, given the price. But we'll go a little bit deeper. Okay, I really liked the emerging of digital analog work. Okay, so have you looked at his uh, previous one, the Brooklyn photo book? And I liked, I've, I've liked all his photo books, I just think some are better than others. I didn't like Brooklyn, for example, as much as his previous ones. But yeah, you looked at the merging and if it changes approach, um, I was trying to guess which was which while flicking through. That's a good thing, I guess. You don't want to have this heavy kind of broken feeling where you can easily tell. A lot of the times I feel like I could before I even read the captions. I would just have an image like that one from China that didn't really seem to fit as well as others. But that's something that's probably going to happen with any photo book. Something that even when I'm curating images that I struggle with. To, to find that cohesion. And given that the book is about a lack of cohesion, you know, you kind of can excuse it that the images themselves in terms of the sequencing are a little bit disparate. Um, but only to a certain degree, I think it works. And then to another degree, it hasn't. Yeah, so if you haven't seen the Brooklyn one, that is, I think it's all digital. So it kind of feels a bit more cohesive within itself, but then yeah, there's artists like Sebastio Salgado who have successfully blended some of their old film work with, with newer digital stuff, but you can still kind of tell there's something different about it. And, it, you know, most of that is probably just the visual sensibility of the way film renders and prints. Uh, this image here, one of the classics that you would probably see in a book like The Suffering of Light, one of my favorite Alex Webb shots where you know he was he was talking about this on a podcast with Roger Deakins where he was just at this bridge and took the shot and didn't even realize that the surfer had perfectly aligned beneath the the crosshair created in this bridge until later seeing the shot but it just works so perfectly and what really helps it you may not realize it is the fact that the the guy on the bike he's casting this perfect shadow that adds contrast that actually draws your attention here if not for this shadow it would still be a great image but the light colors underneath there and the light colors of the concrete on the bridge would not draw your eye as much. It would kind of just feel a bit flatter. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the importance of of this heavy contrast in his images. Look how it goes to complete black there. Another thing that's unique to having shot on, on slide film, like Kodachrome, which is what he did. And then we have these more recent images where you don't have as much of that. So for me, when I'm flipping through this book, 
I really like it. I'm, I'm still glad I bought it, but I don't feel like some of these images work as well with the older ones, some of these newer ones. In terms of theme, it's great. And again, my opinion is just my opinion, but just in terms of visual cohesion, um, there's just something off, really kind of high dynamic range look almost compared to these classics like that and um, like this one and the opening image. There's just a different feel, but it could just be the sense of time. But even this, see, this is one of the older images, one of his more popular ones. And you have those um, heavy contrasts created in the shadows and light. And the amount of layering created within this just doesn't have the same sense. This just feels a little bit more flat, these two images. You've got, you know, one main layer and another. So it doesn't feel as Alex Webb as something like this one. And uh, yeah, this one I love. Absolutely amazing. See what I mean? Like you've got a story being told here with this kid and the scaring away the pigeons, the light play, and then a, an extra element in the middle dividing it all. A window, a subframe there, another subframe with the black shadow, the silhouette created within there, the color contrast. It's all there. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll quickly flip through more of it, but with uh, keeping in mind what you know, my opinion was on the general selection and blending of the images was with those older ones and the newer ones. All in all though, it's a really nice book. I just don't think I would recommend it as the first Alex Webb book that you would probably want to buy if you're not familiar with his work. Because for a similar price, maybe, I'm not sure anymore, you could probably get a copy of The Suffering of Light, which I feel is a better introduction to his work. This book is kind of like what the backstory suggests, where it's kind of these B-side images that didn't really fit into other um, series as well, and they were chucked together. And in saying that, a lot of the best images in this book are the ones that came out of other series. Or from other collections like the suffering of light see i really love this image on the right not as much this one i haven't looked but i know i can tell that this is one of the newer images it just feels flatter and more um two-dimensional which is cool in its own way that is a really great way to present an image i just don't know if they blend as well Oh, this one's crazy. <laughs> I just love this. The, you guys can't quite see it, but this guy at the top with this beautiful suit that has that perfect color contrast against the, the facades. Um, but yeah, given what I just said, in terms of it not being my first recommendation, it's still, you, you can't go wrong. If you um, get this as the first Alex Webb book, you know, you definitely can't go wrong. Big fan of his work. But yeah, let's skip some. I don't want to give the whole book away. Um, and you can see the way the book is sequenced is quite smart. It's quite nicely laid out. You know, you, you've got some of the obvious pairings like this, the blue sky with the white clouds creating, you know, that color combination there being paired up with that. The cat kind of mirrors what's going on with the lock there, this little shape. Um, little subtle things. I think he's really good at doing that. Um, I don't know if he does the sequencing all himself. He probably has an editor or some a whole team. But yeah, most images are kind of laid out like that on their own. Oh, let's go and sleep again. But yeah, I'll wait for the camera to wake up. See again how he finds these little uh, graphical elements out in the street. And it's often something like an eye. He really likes that. You can see that in quite a few of his collections. See images like this, again, are what I'm talking about, where I don't feel like this really fits in quite as well with this dislocated 
because when I when I look at the cover and read the backstory, and um, even though this is one of the newer images, it has that story to it, that dislocated story. What's going on? The obscurity of he's obscuring his eye. You've got this big eye here, the shape. At first, you kind of don't know what you're looking at. Um, the random bin, the little blocks of color. Someone there. Um, but then this one just feels flat. Like, it's a cool image. Sure, the little girl's aligned with the wings, but I just don't think that all of the newer image that were thrown into this book actually made it necessarily better. So in my opinion, I just think that uh, having flipped through this book, and mind you, there's still half of it left to go. You could probably give me your opinion if you flip through all of it or you have a copy. I just think it would have been better if they just recreated the original because what happened is he took out some of the original images, added in a bunch of these newer ones. I just wish it was just a recreation of the uh, original series and maybe adding more that didn't make the cut from back then because these newer images that are kind of um, just broken by this 20 year gap or whatever it is, Maybe it's that, maybe his sensibilities changed or something, you know, about the the camera or the, the world around us. They don't really feel like they fit in quite as well. And I kind of just wish that it was just a recreation of the old one. So that's, that's what I think. Let me know what you think, though. I'd really want to know. Um, I haven't looked at any other reviews of this book, any other flip throughs, nothing at all. This is just purely um, my opinion. So I'm not regurgitating anything else out there. I don't know what other people think. But yeah, I just feel like this book could have been better. And um, I wish they didn't take out any of those original 100, whatever it was, because I think they culled the original uh, selection in order to make room for a bunch of the new ones. And the other thing is that this edition is mostly comprised of the newer work. This one, love this. France 2000. It's just that color play, see? And then also the, the elements of this subject here and the, the person there the size contrast, you have that, um, those pastels working really nicely here. He's divided the image in two, got the car there, leading lines, everything. It kind of has a sense of depth that I didn't find with some of the, the other new stuff. Like this one, see? So this has that disparate kind of dislocated, uh, you know, messiness where like what's going on and it's broken up, but just visually, it just doesn't feel cohesive with the rest of the work. It almost just looks like a smartphone photo. Why is that? Why is that? I think is it the background is too much depth of field, too much detail? Is it the, the way the greens render? It's kind of gaudy, you know, when you have these pinks, these bright pinks, something that you wouldn't have seen in, in his classic stuff like that. I don't know what it is. I just don't really like these images like this one. And I find it <laughs> difficult to say this because I love Alex Webb's work and I love the composition and the theme. I just think this would have fit better in a different book. I don't know. Am I wrong? Same with this here. Like, cool. All right, you've got the guy subframed in there and the baby. Uh, but what is it? Again, it's just kind of looks like a. Um, it doesn't quite fit with images like this one even. Yeah, I might be overthinking it. <laughs> So that's that's the kind of gist of it. I love it. You know, the Coney Island shots are in there. A lot of the classics are in there. I just wish there were more of the classics in there. Um, yeah, like this one just feels really flat and out of place. It looks really flat. Kind of just like a smartphone photo. And um, as good as it is with these, you know, graphical geometric bits, it just doesn't feel as strong. Like, I'll just say it. Yeah. So overall, you got that many pages left. I won't spoil it. I think that gives you an idea. I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as I was hoping. So that was my thoughts on this book. I think this is the first time I've probably said that on any um, book sharing live stream. However, I'm still glad I got it. I still you know, don't regret buying the book and I would still flip back through it. But then it just makes me wonder, um, how would I have been pulled off if they kind of stuck with more of the originals? Let's read some live chat. Hey, man. Alex, how are you going? 
Melissa, yeah, what did you think? Because you already had a copy. I agree, the new work doesn't quite uh, doesn't have quite the same appeal. Mostly, I wish they'd keep the original curation. Yeah, absolutely. And having looked through it, I don't know. I think that it, it wouldn't be just you know our opinion that it kind of would be a broad opinion because there is this like stark kind of you know something off about the the selections there. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> If you do want to get the book, like I said, it's um, available for a pretty good price. I'll turn this camera off. I'll just let it go to sleep. And I got mine on Amazon uh, Australia, but it was actually Amazon f from the US. It was the Australian site, but it was one of it was. There's two different kind of SKUs or item numbers. I'll show you because I have it up on the screen. I'll just try and um, pull in my browser window here. Yeah, one was cheaper than the other. When it came from the US, it was significantly cheaper than than the other one. Uh, all right, let's bring that up on the screen. Move this here where you can see it. So this was the SKU that I purchased. I've put both of them in the the video description if you're curious. It's on sale currently, and it says regular retail price 90 Australian, but it's down to like 43. And if you have Prime, that would be free shipping. It's pretty good. That's, you know, 30 US dollars roughly if you live in Australia. But then that could just mean also that this same SKU or link, if you're in the US, would pop up as just $30. So I have put that in, and I have also put in the the other one, this is just the regular Australian um, SKU or whatever the, the term Amazon uses, which is a different price. It's weird. 6160 down from the same uh, retail price or even a different retail price. So beware, there's something weird going on there. Um, but if you do use the one where it comes from the US, obviously it will take longer because it doesn't come from local warehouses if you're here in Australia. But it does arrive. It is legitimate. It does... Um, pan out. It just took me about a week to get it, which is fine. But I would rather save the 20 bucks. And given the nature of the book that I don't think it's one of his strongest ones, I think it's a fair price. I wouldn't want to overpay for it. So yeah, that's my opinion on that. What do you guys think? Worth it? Alex. Also think it's not his strongest book, but of course it's a compilation of leftovers, so I guess that is the point. Yeah, you know, that's that's true. You're right there. Maybe I had higher hopes just thinking, you know, like it was something different than than what I was expecting. Um, but no, I, did, I didn't want to give that impression. I still love it. I still think it's a really great book, and because it's Alex Webb, I, I'm going to get it regardless, even if it wasn't what it is. <laughs> I'm really speaking um, gibberish here. But no, I recommend it if you're even just slightly a fan of Alex Webb's. So I think that's pretty much it for the book. If anyone has any other questions about it, let me know. Um, what else can I say? Yeah, we've talked about where to buy. If you do want to buy it through Amazon, you can. Obviously, I put affiliate links, which does help me out with a small commission. But get it wherever you want. Get it wherever you can either get the breast, uh, <laughs> the breast price, the best price, uh, or get, get it from a local bookstore if they have it. Support your local bookstores. They don't really, they didn't have this at any local bookstores back when I was buying it. I don't know if they do now. But yeah, I just put those links there in case you want to use them. And again, I highly recommend The Suffering of Light if you haven't seen that, if you haven't got that. I don't know how hard it is to find anymore. And the Istanbul is one of my favorite single collections, Istanbul book. So that's that for the book. Um, yeah. Let me know again if there's anything else you guys uh, want to contribute to the chat before I sum things up. The Violet Isle. Yeah, see, I've heard of that one, but I never see it available. Um, Kel Jones, worth considering the price of Suffering of Light. Do you mean, is Suffering of Light worth its price? See, I don't know what uh, price that is going for now. Back when I bought it, it was decent. It was like 50 bucks or something like that. Well worth it. Absolutely love that book. It's one of my favorite color photo books. Um, but I feel like the Suffering, it's had quite a few reprints, so I think they'll just keep reprinting it. I'll look it up now. 
But that, that one's definitely worth the price. Even this one, to be honest, this one's worth the price because it does seem to be on sale. There's probably a reason why they um, they probably printed heaps. It was printed in, by Aperture China, probably a huge print run. They can afford to discount it a lot. Um, it seems like the Suffering of Light is a little bit harder to find. Now I found one listing that says $200, but that's just here in Australia. I don't know how it is um, wherever you are. Uh, but yeah, Alex agrees. Definitely get that one first. All right, guys. I think that's a, um, that's a good wrap for this episode of uh, you know the book sharing live stream. Let me know what you thought. Uh, are you going to get this book? Are there any other photo books you'd recommend that have come out recently? Something that flew under my radar that you think I would like or that other people viewing the video might like for fans of street photography, especially? Put it in the comments. And uh, if you want to watch some street photography stuff i actually just launched a video on um, the channel overnight where i was shooting street in hanoi where i did shoot some color film it was the mr negative 700 s so that's up on the channel now this one from hanoi so it's one of those street photography pov videos where i walked around shot some film after finishing color i shot some black and white kept me a 400 so it was heaps of fun this one i really liked hanoi for street photography and uh, that's already up on the channel. So feel free to check that out if you want. Literally compiling my next scene now. Nice, dude. I can't wait for your next stuff. I know you're, you've got so much black and white work to get through as well by the looks of things. Same here. I'm actually really starting to feel overwhelmed with the amount of um, film and shots I have to go through for my next um, series. Steve, it's a great deal. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. It's like, you know, 40 bucks. What is that? You can get a couple of rolls of film for that. Melissa, thank, thanks for joining. Great vid. Oh, you've watched the new one? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, Young Hama, a Tokyo street photographer. Young Hama, okay. Friends with made an amazing book. Search his name. Yeah, will do. I'll check it out. You look like you've been having heaps of fun back there, man. I missed out. You have all these meetups with um, Faisal and everyone that I um, wish was happening when I was there, if I, if I wasn't sick also. But I'll be back to Japan. We'll catch up. All right, everyone, thanks for joining and I'll see you on the next video.